Lesson 3 in Unit 3 addresses horizontal alignment creation and specifically introduces the concept of alignments and discusses alignments in the context of a subdivision design. Typically your alignments in subdivision designs are going to be simpler geometry than full highway designs. Uh, they are oftentimes created by office heading right-of-way or parcel fabric. Uh, in lesson one, exercise one, sorry, we'll discuss the creation of the alignment and then in exercise two we'll discuss the labeling of the alignments. So in subdivision alignments we're usually creating alignments from objects and using polylines or lines and arcs to create these alignment objects. And the alignment appears in Prospector, so let's just go through that. Here we have a polyline. And if we were to go to the Home tab and under the Create Design panel we have Alignment and Create Alignment from Objects. And we'll pick the polyline here and you can see that the direction is of the polyline is in this way. We can actually reverse the direction if we wanted to. But we'll press Enter to accept the alignment direction. And this will be called 8th Avenue. proposed center line. There's different categories of alignments. Offset alignments, curb return alignments, miscellaneous alignments. This is a center line alignment. The alignment can go into a site for organization or it can go into a none site which is essentially the alignments tree here. The alignment style controls the display of the alignment object. The alignment label set is the collection of labels that are based on stationing. We won't add curves between tangents and we will erase the existing polyline. If I click OK, there's my alignment object. And you can see the annotation and that's tied to that. So this is a an alignment object. It's 8th Avenue. It's shown under the center line collection here. And there's no profile, profile view, or sample lines associated with that alignment. And if you were to grip the alignment and right click and edit alignment labels. You can see that there are a number of label types assigned. We don't have profiles or design speeds or station equations so we can delete these. But we do have major stations every 100 feet and minor stations. Let's change that to every 20 feet. And if we click OK you'll see the tick increment will increase to every 20 feet. So fairly straightforward to create an alignment from a polyline, which is going to be oftentimes your source data for alignments in site designs. And we looked at the label set, which is the collection of station-based labels. Under Settings tab, if you go to Alignment and Label Styles and Label Sets, the label sets category and the station category work together in that the label set can contain any of these types of labels. So these are station based labels. So if we were to look at a label set here and edit that label set, you can see that this is major, minor, and geometry points. Major, minor, and geometry points. This one here is major and minor only. Well, actually, it does have profile geometry points, so we should delete that out of there. But let's let's make a new one. Well, let's modify this one. Let's call this major fifty, minor ten. And if we go to the labels tab, we can change the increment to fifty for the majors and ten to the minors. And if we grip the alignment, right click and edit alignment labels, we can import this label set and click OK. And now we have a label every 50 at the majors and every 10 at the minors. So those are your station labels. And then you can also apply segment labels to your alignments. So if you pick the alignment, Let's actually clean up. Let's remove the station labels just to make the segment labels more legible. Edit alignment labels. And let's just delete the labels. 
for now. Very easy to add them after. But if we pick the alignment now and went to add labels, you have add alignment labels, station offset labels, signal segment, multiple segment. Let's just go to add alignment labels so we have all the options in a single dialog box. And we can add a multiple segment label which will label the lines and the curves and the spirals and if we click add pick the alignment you can see how the alignment geometry has now been labeled the nice thing about this is that when you edit the data you can see how the numbers change and will react to that label which is a nice feature now if we wanted to we could also show a tag label so if we go to the add labels menu and well let's pick the alignment here again and if we went to add alignment labels we can go to multiple segment and there's notice that there's no line label styles for tags in here in fact we can confirm that in tool space under settings and if we went to the under add labels or add tables you can add a segmental table which will create all the data in one table whether it's lines arcs or spirals and the table style and then the idea is that there are no tags selected so if we did this option here and then just Oh, we're doing the wrong command here. If we pick the alignment first and then go to add tables, we can add a segmental table and choose the table style and then we have the alignment. And what will happen is that the existing labels will be converted to tag labels. So if I click OK now, you'll see how they have now been converted to tag labels. And we can pick a location for the alignment table in the drawing and these tags will update when you modify the tag labels will update in this table when you modify the alignment geometry so a number of ways to label alignments uh, here's the tag labels and you can also create station and offset labels which will update with either repositioning of the label or adjusting the alignment geometry so that concludes the second lesson which is creating alignments in the land development unit for the civil 3d 2010 education curriculum